Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Welcome to our celebration for the feast of St. Peter and Paul. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us all night. To celebrate worthily, we call to our sins. We ask for us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my works, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fall, through my fall, through my most grievous fall. Therefore I ask blessed day and the worship of all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The glory to God in our eyes and our life to the people of our good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord, God, have mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. Father, you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and in the glory of God. O God, who on this solemnity of the Apostles Peter and Paul, give us noble and holy joy. Grant we pray that your church may in all things follow the teaching of those through whom she received the beginnings of our shame. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever. And Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. King Herod started persecuting certain members of the church. He beheaded James, the brother of John, and when he saw that this pleased the Jews, he decided to arrest Peter as well. This was during the days of unleavened bread, and he put Peter in prison, assigning four squads of four soldiers to each guard on his turns. Herod meant to try Peter in public after the end of Passover week. All the time, Peter was under guard. The church prayed to God for him unrelentingly. On the night before Herod was to try him, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, fastened with double chains, while guards kept watch at the main entrance to the prison. Then suddenly the angel of the Lord stood there, and the cell was filled with light. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him. Get up, he said, hurry, and the chains fell from his hands. The angel then said, put on your belt and sandals. After he had done this, the angel next said, wrap your cloak round you and follow me. Peter followed him, but had no idea what the angel did was all happening in reality. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed through two guard posts, one after the other, and reached the iron gate leading to the city. This opened of its own accord, and they went through it and had walked the whole length of the street when suddenly the angel left him. It was only then that Peter came to himself. Now I know it is all true, he said. The Lord really did send his angel and save me from Herod and from all that the Jewish people were so certain would happen to me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Response to the psalm, from all my terrors, the Lord set me free. From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise always on my lips. In the Lord, may my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear and be glad. From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. Glorify the Lord with me. Together, let us praise his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me. From all my terrors he set me free. 
From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. Look towards him and be radiant. Let your faces not be abashed. This poor man called, the Lord heard him and rescued him from all his distress. From all my terrors, the Lord set me free. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who revere him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. He is happy who seeks refuge in him. From the Lord, my terrors, the Lord set me free. Please stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples. Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, some say he is John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he said, who do you say I am? Simon Peter then spoke up. You are the Christ, he said, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, you're a happy man because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my father in heaven. So I now say to you, you are Peter and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The world of um, Hollywood, of film, uh, the world of television, entertainment, it depends quite substantially on stereotypes, on obvious categories, and on shorthand for descriptions and summaries. It does this because it's got a brief moment to get the attention of those it's addressing and often the backstory is too long or too complex to dwell upon. So we begin to recognize those memes, if you like, those tropes, those stereotypes, those oft-repeated phrases because they conjure up a larger picture. So if I were to say, take me to your leader, you would immediately, I think, think of any sci-fi movie you've seen or any improbable episode where aliens land on earth and the first thing they do when they find a group of humans if it's earth they say take me to your leader why because the leader is supposed in some way to embody to sum up to summarize or to give a snapshot sketch of what the people themselves are like. The leader will embody in some way, shape or form their values, their choices, their direction of travel. That's maybe why sometimes, and this is maybe one of those times, where the example of those who lead, if they have a somewhat elastic relationship with what is true, make us uncomfortable because we feel that lack of integrity is somehow a reflection of us and that their lack of integrity does not reflect the way 
we wish ourselves to be, to be seen and to be understood. And while that may be true of political leadership, the opposite can be true of someone perhaps a head of state who for many years has exercised a leadership role with great integrity and authority, though perhaps not with much power. So one is admired as embodying the best of what it is to be people like us, and one not because they tend not to. But the leader embodies in some way the values of the people they lead, is not just a stereotype worthwhile for Hollywood, but a summary of how we see ourselves and how we want to be seen. So how we see our leaders and who our leaders are and who we entrust with leadership and who we understand to lead us speak about us as much as about them. So when we reflect today on the lives of two early and great leaders within our church, we have a valuable opportunity to reflect about ourselves and to decide what part of who and what they are we wish also to imitate. It actually works, interestingly enough, both ways today, because not only can we learn about the leadership of Peter, but we can learn about what he thought the leadership of the Lord was like. Who do people say that I am? Am I just a charismatic preacher? Am I just a good guy? Am I just a prophet? Well, you are all those things, but you are also the one sent by God for our salvation, Peter is happy to affirm. And he sees in his leader, the Lord, those values and goes on to try to embody them himself in the leadership role that he is given and into which he then grows. And he's so different, of course, being someone who exercises his ministry quietly within the land of Palestine and who quietly goes about his business of getting it right himself and supporting those others who seek to make the Lord known. And his counterpart, whom we also celebrate today, well, a fiery and charismatic figure, a great traveler, a great preacher, and one who did not confine his mission to the home territory of Judaism, but took it to the nations, to the Gentiles, to the pagans, and to the Mediterranean world, and so to the ends of the earth, ourselves included. So what do we conclude from those varying kinds of leadership? What do they have in common? And what do they offer us as members of the church? Well, both fearless in speaking out. Peter, we heard today, released from his chains. But the dungeon in which he was held in Rome is now a church. It's called San Pietro in Vincoli, St. Peter in Chains because he would be chained again at the pleasure of the emperor and finally crucified, as was his lord. Paul also ended up in a dungeon in Rome and gave his blood too. So, in common, they both courageously spoke out about the good news entrusted to them in different contexts, in different ways, according to their ability, to different people, but it was the same gospel that they spoke. They both failed spectacularly. Peter in denying the Lord in his time of need, and Paul in his failure to recognize him to begin with. But they weren't defined by their failure, but rather by how they experienced forgiveness, rehabilitation, and a new way of witnessing. And they both gave of their all. They both finally gave their life's blood to witness to their belief in the resurrection. So the courage to speak out, the good grace to recover from failure, 
and the ability to make it our life's project. That's what our leaders do. And if it is leadership, then that's what we are called to follow. So for something of their courage, something of their repentance, and something of their dedication to the task for the intercession of Peter and Paul, for ourselves and for each other, we pray today. To pray for our needs, we stand. In celebrating the memory of the apostles Peter and Paul, we celebrate the origins of our lived faith. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen us as we live it. Peter's faith in the Christ, the Son of God, was the Father's gift to him. May we always hold fast to our gift of faith in spite of our failures. Lord, hear us. Both Peter and Paul experienced vividly, vitally, what it is to be forgiven. May we draw strength from their example of repentance and forgiveness. Lord, hear us. The care of many fledgling Christian communities rested heavily on Peter and Paul. May the successor of Peter and the other bishops of the church receive light and strength in continuing their mission in the footsteps of St. Paul to the known world. Lord, hear us. May all of us called to witness to the gospel be convinced that the starting point is a love for the Lord and for his people. Lord, hear us. For persecuted Christians, may the example of Peter and Paul be for them a beacon of hope and a pledge of eternal reward. Lord, hear us. And that those who are sick, lonely, bereaved, Take comfort from the sense of unity and fellowship which we enjoy as members of God's holy people in the church. Lord, hear us. God our Father, you raised up Peter and Paul, varied gifts and contrasting talents, to work in the service of the gospel. Grant that we may likewise place our talents and abilities at the service of your kingdom. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, 
fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Let's pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice into our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all, his holy church. May the prayer of the Apostles, Lord, accompany these sacrificial gifts that we present before you. May their intercession make us devoted to you in the celebration of these mysteries. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For by your providence, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul bring us joy. Peter, foremost in confessing our faith, Paul, its outstanding preacher. Peter, who established the early church from the remnant of Israel, Paul, teacher of the Gentiles that you call. And so, each in a different way, gathered together the one family of the Lord, and revered together throughout the world, they share a Baptist crown. Therefore, with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as together with them, without end, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, John our Bishop, and all who minister in your church. Remember our brothers and sisters fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them 
to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, St. Joseph of the Apostles and all the saints have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to life eternal, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours, forever and ever. Amen. For the coming of God's kingdom, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I give you, my own peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will. You who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Socially distanced, we offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, who have been renewed by this sacrament, so to live in the church, that persevering in the breaking of bread and the teaching of the apostles, we may be one in heart and soul, made steadfast in your love. Our prayer we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your presence this morning. Thank you for joining us online. Hope you can celebrate the feast day uh, with appropriate joy and, uh, and feasting. We ask God's blessing. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.